As WordPress approaches its 21st birthday, it'll soon be able to legally drink in the US. And on that note, it just continues to age like fine wine. With the release of WordPress 6.5, site owners are now getting a number of quality of life updates that will make building and displaying content on your site just that little bit more refined. But not all of these updates work with all the themes. In this video, we'll show you exactly what's changed and what that means for your site. Do not click that update button until you've watched the whole video. According to numerous sources, as of April 2024, WordPress sites make up 43.3% of all websites. And for sites that use content management systems, WordPress accounts for 62.8% of the market share. For reference, that accounts to 835 million sites. And Authority Hacker Pro members only account for like 20 or 30 million of those. So you guys are gonna have to up your game. First up, we have the new font library. The new interface shows you the fonts you have installed, the variants available on your site, and it gives you a simple interface to upload new fonts quickly. Using this, Google Fonts are now easily connected to your site with a simple button click and selection process. Very nice. The ability to load fonts locally can improve the performance of your site, as can the ability to limit the number of fonts being used across your site. Okay, show of hands, how many WordPress nerds got as excited as we did about fonts getting a better management structure at 6.5. Think maybe it's time we all go outside and touch some grass. Well, actually, you might not all want to get too excited. The new font library will only work with full site editing themes. So I guess, hooray if you're using 2024. And if you're using a classic theme like GeneratePress or Astra, then unfortunately this means no new font library for you. Uh. Since over 90% of sites use classic themes, this begs an interesting question. Will we see a fork in new features and support for classic themes? Or will WordPress bring its new features to them too? All right, now that we've recovered from the magic that is the font library, let's move on to something that is a little bit more administrative in nature. Enhanced drag and drop and the ability to rename any block in the list view. If you work on sites with a lot of pages and blocks, then you will appreciate the power of the list view control for quickly finding things. The problem is that because all the blocks have relatively generic names, it becomes quite difficult to use the list view in a meaningful way to navigate the blocks. In WordPress 6.4, we were given the ability to change group block names, but in 6.5, this functionality has been enhanced to allow you to change the name of every block in the list view. It's absurd how much benefit you can gain from such a simple quality of life change, but being able to use descriptive names for each block and group of blocks will make it so much easier to find and edit the content you're looking for. All of us have that one page that is container hell, but not anymore. Simply select any block in the list view, click the three dots, find the rename option, and voila, everything is now much easier to find. And staying with the list view control, the drag and drop feature has also been improved. Historically, when you clicked a block in the list view and wanted to drag it to a different place in the list, the user interface represented the block as a thin blue line that didn't move up and down the list too well. This would often see you nesting blocks or dropping them in the wrong place. Now though, when you click and hold on a block, it becomes a chunkier boy. And so when you drag it around, it's much more obvious where you're placing it on the page. It's these little improvements that get us excited. I mean, we're pretty easy to please. This next change might not sound so big, but for anyone that runs a content site, you're gonna love this. WordPress 6.5 comes with over 110 performance updates. They also claim that input processing speed is five times faster now. And anecdotally from our testing, this is absolutely true. Uploading content to a page now feels buttery smooth like you're using a desktop app. It's crisp, it's fluid, and typing on big pages feels as responsive as typing on Notion now. Loading time in the post editor and the site editor is twice as fast, and across your site, you should see a 25% improvement in load time. Now, from a design perspective, another feature that has caught our eye were the changes made to the cover block. Previously, if you wanted to do simple things like add a colored overlay to a cover or maintain aspect ratios, it could often get quite complicated and you would have to create your own CSS classes and add them to the site. But now, the cover block has gotten an upgrade and it allows you to set the aspect ratio of each cover block individually and add colored overlays from the block configuration panel. The aspect ratio setting is a real time saver because being able to set a classic three x two or 16 by nine configuration from a dropdown and ensure that your image isn't cropped when you view it on mobile is very handy. These changes to the block removes the need for additional plugins in many cases, making your site leaner and faster. There are a bunch of these quality of life improvements across the product 
as well as some performance optimizations. The site editor also got some love. There are enhancements to how drop shadows are handled. You can programmatically bind custom fields to blocks now. And even the adherence to the HTML standards via the API has seen improvements. In fact, there are a number of API enhancements to WordPress 6.5, which are a welcome addition because for the long-term health of WordPress, the ability to integrate it and with it via APIs is critical. The most interesting API improvement is the inclusion of the Interactivity API, which will allow front-end developers to build sites with blocks that interact with each other and also move data between blocks without needing page reloads. The Interactivity API is pretty technical, but the possibilities are endless. Definitely go check out the demo site that the developers have put together to give you an idea of what's possible. There is a link in the description. The last thing we wanted to talk about is one of those additions that you probably didn't know you wanted until you saw it added plugin dependencies. Have you ever found yourself installing a plugin only to find out that it doesn't work because it requires an additional plugin to make the original plugin work? I see you nodding. Yeah, us too. Now, developers can include a dependency flag in the header of their plugin that calls out which other plugins are required to run their plugin. When a user installs a plugin and the required additional plugins are not installed, they'll get an error warning and in the plugin list, they'll see which additional plugins are required. This is one of those features that seems like it was a no brainer, but it was never there, but now it is. And that's one of the most subtle superpowers of WordPress. Over time, it just keeps adding things that make your life a little bit easier and giving you a little bit more control. There aren't many seismic shifts in WordPress. It's just steady progress that's safe and comfortable and reliable. We're really interested to see how theme developers take advantage of some of these new capabilities in WordPress, particularly the interactivity API and the custom fields in blocks editions. What about you? Is there anything you're particularly looking forward to playing around with in this new version of WordPress? Or perhaps is there something missing that you'd like to see in a future update? Let us know, leave your thoughts and comments down below. And while you're down there, be sure to give us a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. If you enjoyed this video, you'll probably also enjoy this video.